boys and girls. It's good to be with you again for another Tuesday Club. We hope you've had a good half term and we're glad to have you back with us. It's a shame we cannot be together, but that's God's will for us at the moment. Shall we pray to him and ask him to bless our lesson together? Hands together and eyes closed. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank thee and we bless thee for another Tuesday Club lesson. And we pray that thou will help us and help the children and grant, O oh Lord, that we may have our hearts opened and our minds given understanding of thy truth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week, or just before half term, Mrs. Armstrong started to teach you about the journeys of the Apostle Paul. Now, the most important part of God's word is the gospel account of the Lord Jesus Christ's life, death, resurrection and ascension back to heaven. Remember how he came down to this earth from heaven, how he was God and yet he became man and he lived amongst us and he lived a perfect and a sinless life. And then he gave himself upon the cross in order to save all his people from their sins. On the third day he rose from the dead and he was taken back up to heaven. Now it was God's plan that this wonderful message of the life, death, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ should be preached to all the world because it's the only way that boys, girls, men and women can get to heaven and have their sins forgiven. And so it was God's plan that this wonderful message should start from Jerusalem, which is just here, and it should be preached and it should spread through all the world. This is part of the Mediterranean Sea, Mediterranean Ocean, but it should spread beyond those shores and it should go right the way over to um, Africa and England and Scotland, Ireland, Wales, that it should go to America, that it should go to the Far East, that it should spread into all the corners of the earth. And the Bible says that when God's word has been preached in every language, in every continent, in every tribe and tongue, then Christ will return again because all the people who he has chosen to save, will be saved and will come to believe upon him and know him and love him. Well, that's God's plan. And the book of the Acts of the Apostles, which follows the Gospels, tells how that began and how the Apostles, the 12 Apostles, and then a man called Paul, who was added to that number, how they spread the word. And our journey, our, our lessons this term, are taken from this book of Acts and are speaking about the Apostle Paul. Well, we learned last time, uh, Mrs. Armstrong taught us how he was Saul. He was a hater of the Christians and he was journeying to this town, Damascus, with letters in order to be able to take Christian people prisoners and throw them into prison. He persecuted them, he hated them, but God wonderfully saved him. And on that road to Damascus, a great light shone from heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him and converted his soul and uh, said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul was converted, became the great apostle Paul, and he preached the word of God. And he made three great missionary journeys, three great expeditions into Europe, into Asia Minor and into Europe. To preach the word of God. First of all, he set off and he went across to this island here and then across up into this area, which we nowadays call Turkey. And he made a rather short, well, it was long for us, but it was short compared with his other journeys, and then came back. And then sometime later, he had a second journey and he crossed and he revisited these places that he'd been on his first journey. And he continued across in this direction, continuing westwards to take the gospel. He wanted to go down into this part where this word Ephesus is. But God wouldn't let him. God wouldn't allow him to go south. He wanted to go north. God wouldn't allow him to go north. It was as if God was pushing him in a particular corridor, a particular route. And he came across to a port called Troas on the sea here. And at Troas, he had a dream. He had a vision and he dreamt that he saw a man from Macedonia, this part of the country here, which is to the north of what we today call Greece, Macedonia. Uh, he dreamt that there was a man from Macedonia and he was saying, come, 
come and help us. And when Paul awoke, he realised that this was a call from God to cross the sea and to go to Macedonia. Now, you'll be aware that there are different land masses. So there's the great land mass of Africa. There's a great land mass of Asia spreading over in that direction. And this is Europe, these great continents. This was the first time the gospel had come to Europe. It hadn't come to Europe, it hadn't crossed over the sea. It was now crossing over the sea and everybody in Europe, and we live in Europe. This was the first time Europeans, and I appreciate a good many people who listen to this broadcast probably are from Africa originally, but we live in Europe. And it was the first time the gospel had come to this great continent of Europe. So the Apostle Paul and some companions crossed over the sea and they came to this town called Philippi. And that's where we're starting our lessons, uh, our lessons about today. They came to Philippi. Now, Philippi was a Roman town, a very important town. But it seems that there were not many Jewish people there. Paul would usually go to the Jewish people first. If there was a synagogue, he would preach in the synagogue. Because after all, God had told the Jewish people about himself down to the Old Testament. But it seems that there was no Jewish synagogue. Probably there were not many Jewish people there. It needed a certain number of men in order to be able to build a synagogue. There weren't that enough, so there was no synagogue built. So there were some people, and they were ladies, mainly ladies, who would gather together outside the city walls, down by the river, for a time of prayer on the Sabbath day. And I'm going to read to you what we read. Well, um, I've actually, um, no, I've not got it written on the board. I've got the next verse on the board. I'll just read to you this verse. It says, and on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was usually made. And we sat down and spoke unto the women which resorted thither. There was a riverside and they went down to the river and these women went there to pray. And the Apostle Paul and his companions sat down to speak. To the ladies, what do you suppose they told them about? Well, they told them about the Lord Jesus. They told them about his resurrection. They told them about how he'd died on the cross, about how he needed to be forgiven for our sins. These people had the Old Testament. They knew that God told them they were sinners. And they knew that someday God was going to provide a saviour. And he told them the saviour has come. The Lord Jesus Christ has come. Now, we don't know about the other ladies, but we do know about one lady who heard the Apostle speaking. And her name was Lydia. I'm going to put a picture of her up on the board. Of course, we don't really know that that's what Lydia looked like, but that's what our picture is like. We're going to pretend that that's what Lydia looked like. And this is what we read about Lydia. I've got the verse from the Bible written up on the board, and this is what it said. And a certain woman named Lydia... A seller of purple from the city of Thyatira heard us. Now, she was a seller of purple. You'll notice that her clothes here are shown in purple. This was, she was a, a tradeswoman. She was a businesswoman. Thyatira was a, a city over here in uh, the, the part of the world where Paul had actually passed through. And Thyatira was famous for its purple cloth. And Lydia was a trader in this purple cloth. Now, today, people love to buy clothes. And many ladies love to buy pretty dresses and beautiful garments. Well, that's the sort of thing she traded in. She had purple cloth and people would take it and make beautiful clothes out of it. And it seems that this trade had made her rather wealthy because later on we read that she had uh, a house, a household and uh, things like that. Um, and uh, her house was big enough for a church to meet in, for a people to meet in to worship God, because later on we'll see she was converted and the church started to meet in her house. She was evidently a rather wealthy woman. And um, she was what we would today call a businesswoman. She was, well, I've got some words up here that I'll put up on the board again. Another little picture illustration. She was rich. I said she was well off, she was clever, she was uh, intelligent, she was um, possibly well educated, but anyway, she was bright enough to be able to make herself a good trade. She was the boss, 
She had her own business. She had other people to work for her and to labour for her and to help her. A seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, she heard us. She heard the Apostle Paul preaching. And that's so important to hear the word of God being preached. Boys and girls, never miss Tuesday Club. Always listen to these meetings when they're posted, these lessons, because that's where you'll hear about God and about the Lord Jesus Christ. She heard the apostles speaking. Always listen to your Bible teachers when they teach you. Ask your parents if they can take you to church if you don't already go. It's so important to come to church services and to hear those who truly preach the word of God, because that's how Lydia came to know the Lord. And it says that uh, she heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Now, it's important to remember that she was already a worshipper. She met with these other Jewish people and she worshipped God. And yet, despite the fact that she came to worship God with these other people, her heart was closed. Her heart was closed to the message. She heard the message, but her heart was like a door that was shut. And because the door was shut, the Lord Jesus didn't have entrance into her life. She didn't hear, she, she heard the words that were being said, but her heart was shut against that message. She didn't really want to be converted. Perhaps she had a love of her sin. Perhaps she had a love of her wealth. Perhaps her riches and her status and her importance were too important to us. We don't know enough about her character to really say. But whatever it was, her heart was shut against the message. And that's the way we are. Our hearts are naturally shut against the word of God. It would be lovely if whenever somebody spoke about the Lord Jesus to a friend, immediately they believed. But it's not like that. People run from the message. People love their sins more than they love the word of God. And her heart was naturally shut. And it says here, she heard us whose heart the Lord opened. As she listened to that message, God did something in Lydia's life. God opened that heart. God made that message to enter into her soul. She believed it. She understood it. For the first time in her life, she really understood the things from the Bible. And that message entered into her soul. And she heard about the Lord Jesus and she believed, and she repented of her sins. It says here, the Lord opened her heart that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. In other words, she really listened for the first time. She paid attention, but she believed. She believed the things that were being preached by the Apostle Paul and his friends. And it says here, whose heart the Lord opened. She was rich and she was clever and she was the boss of her organisation. But she realised that really she was poor. Without the things of God, she was poor. No matter how much wealth she might have, she really had nothing important. The most important thing is to know the Lord God. And she didn't have that. She was poor. She was foolish. Oh, she might be clever enough to run a business, but she was foolish. These words might be a little dim for you to be able to see them. But they say poor, foolish and a servant. Oh, yes, she was the boss of her organisation. But she realised now that there was somebody far bigger and more important. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And she gave her life to him and she yielded to him. She believed in him. She repented of her sins. She placed her trust in this Jesus, whom the Lord Jesus, who, whom Paul was, was preaching. And her life was changed. We read she was baptised. That means she wanted everybody to know that she'd become a Christian. So she was baptised. <laughs> they took her and they plunged her underneath the river of water and lifted her up again. That's a picture that the Bible uses of a tomb. When a person is dead, they are, they are buried. Well, she had a new life. The old Lydia was now dead and buried. So they pushed her under the water and they picked her out again to show that there was a new Lydia about to to start a, a new Christian life. And that is a wonderful picture of a transformation that has taken place in a Christian's life. When we're truly converted, God tells us that we should be baptised to show it and to tell everybody that we are new. She was baptised. But not only that, it says that her household were baptised as well. Now, these would have been older boys and girls or perhaps young men and women, and they would have heard the message and they were 
old enough to believe. You're probably old enough to believe if you're listening to this message. And they heard the message and they believed. They believed what she was saying and they themselves became Christians. She wanted her household to hear, so she invited the Apostle Paul and his friends to her home. And they preached and these people believed and her household came to know the Lord as well. And uh, she said, come into my house and abide there. She put them up. They stayed with her. They, uh, they, she gave them accommodation. They gave them beds. They stayed with her while they were in Philippi. And uh, later on, when a church started to form and others believed, well, they came to stay with her as well. She was truly converted. She was now living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And later on, when the apostle went further on his journeys, this church at Philippi was very, very special to him because they cared for Paul. They sent money to Paul and they looked after the apostle Paul. And Lydia was the first one to hear the word of God and to believe. And boys and girls, you've heard the word of God tonight. You've heard about the Lord Jesus, how he died, how he rose again from the dead, how he's the only way our sins can be forgiven. Have you believed? If not, we pray that you will. And we pray that you will walk with the Lord and that like Lydia, you will truly show and that you will want your friends to hear and to believe as well. Shall we pray? Dear Lord God, we do thank thee for thy word and we thank thee for this particular message of Lydia. Oh Lord, open our hearts, give us understanding of this message that we too might believe in the Lord Jesus and place our trust in him and that our lives might be converted and that it might show that we are truly thy children. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.